Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I can't believe it's nearly been a year since I bought this Land Rover behind me, the 2014 Defender, which you'll have seen on the channel. And also recently, I've just driven at over 10,000 miles with this Land Rover. I, just, I picked it up with just over 20,000 miles on the clock and it's now just done nearly 32,000 miles. So I've done 10,000 miles in this Land Rover. I've driven all around the country and I've been to shows, I've been to events, and I've also used it every day on the farm for checking the cows and sheep. Um, and then also going and picking up things like feed, collecting minerals from central wool growers and places like that. Um, so it's been a really good farm vehicle. And one thing which I couldn't believe about when I was looking at buying a Land Rover was the bad reviews these Defenders get in, I believe it was Autocar. It had something like a, a 3 out of 10 score as a vehicle. And I think that sometimes a lot of these car reviewers, if they're from an urban environment, they might not appreciate the rural aspects shall we say or the rural qualities or characteristics of a farm vehicle so i think that's why the defender got a really a bit of a negative review in the mainstream sort of car journalism automotive world and actually if you're from a farming background or if you're involved in the countryside you realize they're a really really good capable farm vehicle so i take this land rover literally everywhere around the farm it goes all over, the, all over the marshes of the Norfolk Broads National Park, whether it's wet or whether it's dry, in the winter and the summer, um, and it's been absolutely brilliant. I've got two different gear ranges, the high range and the low range. Sometimes I use the low range when I'm going around the marshes, and touch wood, I've never been stuck. And some people as well have been asking about, should we modify this Defender, should we put a winch on the front, um, and things like that. I wanted to keep it as OEM, as original as possible. Um, I bought this last year from a company called Simon James Cars, and it did come with these vents on the bonnet here, which I don't believe are original. And I've also as well got the original seats in my workshop. These are not the original seats. They were put in these Zocaro style leather seats by the first owner. Um, it's also as well got a little command arm, which I love. It's also as well got around the back a good storage area which at the moment I've got a, what is it, a JCB bag storage space. I use this old uh, plastic box and I've just put some bungee cords on the side. That's quite handy for holding cargo to stop it from rolling around everywhere. Maybe in the future I would put some wooden panels along here just to protect the sides from getting dented and, and smashed up when there's things rolling around in the back. Um, but other than that, this back has been absolutely brilliant. Any parts from tractors which need to be fixed for like the 135, the 65 or something like that. It has got a bit of storage. I've also fitted, it didn't come with it, I fitted a tow bar which I bought from Urban Automotive online last year during the COVID era um, and I did fit that myself. So I've got a tow bar on the back which I use to tow the livestock trailer around and the flatbed trailer if I pick up some calves or any small tractors. Um, one thing I have noticed just a little bit is in places it is starting to rust up a bit but that's just one of those things from muck and from the farmyard. Um, two rather interesting stories with this Defender. It has actually been driven into a couple of times by some people. One was I was going around a car park getting some fuel and uh, a lady drove into the side of the Defender with a Mercedes and it dent she dented her Mercedes and this is the damage it caused to the Defender. Uh, absolutely nothing because she hit this wheel and part of this bumper, which is a rubber bumper. I think the bumper's gone a little bit loose, but other than that, it didn't really do any damage at all. So I said to her, I said, I said, it's fine, don't worry about it. And off she drove. She had a dent in the front of her car where she'd driven into the side of the Defender. Um, and another problem as well was the other day I was reversing out of a track and I didn't see a bollard and I, I had a massive smack at the back of the Defender. I thought, what the hell, what on earth have I hit? And I'd hit this mud guard at the back and it's actually crushed a bollard in a car park somewhere. Um, and all it's done is just slightly dented this mud guard, which I had off the other day and I just knocked it back. I <laughs> straightened it out with a sledgehammer. So it's had two incidences there where it's just been parked up or I've been reversing and it caused more damage to the objects or the things hitting the Defender than the actual Defender, which I find quite funny. Um, I know I shouldn't find it funny, but I do just find it hilarious. Um, and that just goes to show, you know, these are some solid things. They're some solid vehicles. If I was using, you know, a car or something like that, or a pickup truck, I probably would have smashed or dented the side in. Um, but because these are slightly raised off the ground, the Defenders, you do generally avoid side collisions and things like that because they are just that bit higher off the ground. I have recently noticed is underneath it I've got some ball joints at the front for my steering rack and they have just recently um, started to leak a little bit so the next time this has a service it is due a service at 32,000 miles 
um, we will just get them looked at and they might have to be um, resealed but other than that it is actually a pretty tidy Defender there's not too much really to go wrong with it it's pretty basic it's just got coil springs no fancy air suspension or anything like that um, it's very well behaved very reliable and like I say I've just done 10,000 miles of it it's been fine so um, it sort of begs the question really should we look at another vehicle for the future I sort of had a little bit of a look at the Ineos Grenadier last year when we went to the Midlands Machinery Show and we are going to get one of those in June to try out for a bit um, another vehicle which I was looking at was the new Defender, the 90, and to spec it in the commercial spec. I was just playing around with it this morning. You have to let me know what you think about it, but maybe just specking it up in black with some white wheels, um, and then we could have some Ollie's Farm decals on the side. Now, that, they are actually a commercial vehicle, the hardtop models, um, but as this Defender puts, the more, puts more miles on as it starts to age, um, I will look at a replacement as a, as a main workhorse because at the moment this is the main workhorse for Ollie's farm but in the future it will have to be replaced by something and it will take a secondary role just for checking cattle and sheep for example and then the next machine, the next vehicle will take up the, the full responsibilities of driving all over the country going to Birmingham, going to places which brings me to another point about this Defender is that if you do do long journeys because it's got it's just got a Ford Transit engine up front and it's got a Volvo transmission it's actually quite comfortable on long distance journeys. Yes, the wheels do hum, the gearbox does get quite hot in here, and you haven't got any air conditioning, but I absolutely love it um, when I'm out, on the, out and about on this. And the whole thing is rattling. I had a builder we took down to the a pro, to a project the other day, and he said to me, he said, oh, have you shut the back door? The door, back door was shut, but the Defender was just rattling around, and I just said, you know, it's just how it is. But people nowadays are used to these modern, quiet cars, which are very practical and reliable and quiet. Um, and the Defenders have got a bit of character about them. It's just one of those things. And I was thinking, you know, this morning, the times we're in at the moment with the cost of everything and with, uh, you know, the chip shortage, with part shortage, with labour shortages and things like that, this Land Rover is completely 100% rebuildable. You can strip the bearings down, you can strip the engine, the transmission. All of this centre console dash can be taken apart, rebuilt in just a few days or weeks at a top workshop. And that's one of the reasons as well, I would imagine, why the military have used Land Rover Defenders for so long. I think they have they have decommissioned them now, um, but I don't think the new Defenders are probably as reliable or as strong or as rebuildable and versatile as these older Defenders. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about these, is that they are just so unique. So I will be keeping this one, but later on down the line, maybe six months or a year's time, um, we will look at something to replace this as a main work vehicle. Will that be the new Land Rover Defender 90 in a commercial spec, or will it be the Ineos, the Ineos Grenadier, which is the Ineos' answer to what they believe should have been the new Defender? Um, leave a comment in the comment section down below what you think might be a good next farm vehicle to look at as a main workhorse, as something which can travel on the roads, you know, high speed, 70 miles an hour on the dual carriageway, perhaps, you know, something which doesn't rattle like this does, but something which will last and something which is well made, hopefully, um, and will be a bit more comfortable than the, than the Defender, but can also, at the same time, um, do farm jobs, and, and you know, can I, I need to be able to go and check animals, I need to go and check the cattle, livestock. I did look at the Toyota Hilux, it was just a bit too expensive for me, but now looking at the new Defender 90, I've priced it up and it was a little bit cheaper, than the new Hilux, which is, is crazy. The Hilux came out about 50,000, and I can get a new Defender for around about the mid 40s, and maybe one day in the long, long term future, um, I'll have this Defender done up and restored once it's done thousands and thousands of miles on the farm. When it gets to 100,000, um, we'll rebuild it and we'll put it back with the 135 as well. So let me know what you think about that. And also, if you've got any suggestions on any of the replacement farm vehicles you might think would be able to replace the Land Rover Defender which we've had on the farm for a year now and has been absolutely brilliant absolutely fantastic bit of kit so with that thanks for watching today's video give this video a thumbs up if you like Defenders and old school vehicles and all that sort of good stuff and I will catch you on the next one click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.